Hi guys and welcome to the second session of uh, sort of my two-part series on uh, mission and evangelism. So last time we talked about um, evangelism in the workplace and how to practically evangelize on a day-to-day -day basis. And this time the goal of what we're planning on talking about is how to set up a local mission trip um, and how to get uh, youth sort of inspired and fired up um, and give them a practical use of how to do a mission trip. Um, so, first off, before we can get started and really discuss, um, you know, what a local mission trip looks like, um, first I'd like to tell you a little bit about my experiences with the local mission trips. So I've done a few local mission trips um, to, you know, New York City, we've done, you know, to Washington, D.C., we've done to Delaware uh, by the beach, we've done as a group um, uh, mission trips to L.A., mission trips all over. Um, and what we, the sort of the, the goal of the mission trips is not necessarily to, uh, you know, to, to baptize people or to bring them to the Orthodox faith immediately. Um, but the game plan is to plant seeds everywhere we go. Uh, and hopefully that we would be the link to the people um, to bring them closer to Christ. Um, what, I, what, I, what I like to really give uh, you guys is sort of a clear, concise manner of how to set up a mission trip, how to go about in the planning, um, and what are the necessary... Uh, steps that need to be taken in terms of preparation. So I'll give you the most recent um, experience that I've had. Uh, we set up a local mission trip for a group of high school youth, about 25, um, to go to the beach in Delaware. And what we did was we, um, first for four weeks in advance, we set up training. And what the training consisted of is, number one, the how to have the mentality of a missionary. And what does that mean? Uh, the mentality of a missionary requires um, an urgency and a uh, deep uh, brokenness within for the salvation of others. So that when you are when you are so close to uh, God and when you spend so much time with Him and you see the things that break God's heart, you in turn, because of your love for Him, are broken by the things that He's broken for. So God is 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 brokenhearted for all the people outside in the world that do not have a relationship with him and he longs for them and he desires for them and we're supposed to be the hands and feet um, in this world um, to them. So the first session that we sat and we talked to the kids about was how to have that urgency for uh, people's souls and how to see people the way that God sees them and to see the potential in them. Um, and we spent over about over an hour talking about that um, and then the second session, we talked about how to prep yourself. And how do you prep yourself? We talked about uh, the necessity for prayer. We talked about the necessity for uh, spending time um, in the Word of God. We talked about um, making sure that we were regularly, regularly practicing repentance and confession. Because in order for us to be able to bring others to repentance, we have to have a life of repentance for ourselves. Um, so we spent another um, probably hour and a half session. The third session we talked about the how-tos. And what are the how-tos like? The how-tos require um, basically the type of people groups that we'd encounter. So the people groups that we'd encounter, whether it be, and I know Mina, Mina has went extensively through uh, different types of people groups and how to evangelize to them. So we talked about, you know, the, the former Christian. We talked about uh, the homosexual. We talked about, um, you know, the, the, the atheist. We talked about the broken person that had, you know, prior experiences of, you know, whether it be... Uh, you know, abuse or addiction or whatever. Um, and then we talked about, you know, how to witness to other religions. So Muslims, um, Jehovah's Witnesses, various other groups. And we spent about an, a two-hour session on that. We answered all the questions. And what we did, what was really important, is we set up mock situations. So what the mock situation would look like is uh, I'd give them a scenario, for example, um, 
where there's a girl who you meet on the boardwalk and you talk to her and you begin to start conversating with her and um, you know she's so in in the sort of you know stern or tough in the beginning um, and then as the conversation sort of escalate you begin to find out that the woman was uh, molested um, and uh, the reason why she uh, couldn't believe in a higher power was because. Um, she was abused by people that were supposed to love her. Um, and if God any way resembles her father on earth, then there's no way that she wants to follow him. Um, so the, the idea of just the person being so broken and having so many uh, past experiences or encounters where she was severely hurt. So we talked about how to go about and discussing with, the, with, with that person. Um, we talked about how the importance of hearing people out and not being so quick to uh, speak but to let people vent and open up and when the opportunity arises what I the, the analogy that I was saying to them was in the same way that you're playing in a game or like a soccer player or a football player sees an opening where he can go in and score in the same way with us we listen for key words when people are speaking that it gives us an opportunity to go in um, and speak to them about the Lord um, so that was the third session. In the fourth session, we talked about logistics. And what the logistics of a mission trip look like is um, basically we uh, we set up, uh, when we went to the mission trip, we got two barracks, which was, you know, 20 rooms for, uh, 20 beds in open space for a bunch of guys. And then we had another barrack for the girls, which was 20 beds. And we had um, the guys stay together. They prayed together. They spent time together. We had the girls um, doing the same thing, and we'd get together every single day. The goal of every single day, we'd get together, pray in the morning, um, the Bay of Prayers. Um, we'd have some time of sharing in the Bible to inspire them, to motivate them to be, uh, you know, uh, driven when they're going out and doing the mission work. And then we'd set out to do a local um, mission activity. So one of the mission activities that we had, we went out on the boardwalk and we were passing out bottles of water. And on the bottles of water, we set put lab uh, labels on them. Um, with different Bible verses or whatever. And then what we'd say is, hey, uh, you know, we're just handing out free free water bottles. We just want to spread um, love onto this boardwalk. And people are like, oh, love. like, what do you mean by love? And we would follow up by saying there's so little love in the world, and our goal is that we want to be a beacon of light onto this boardwalk. So people would like be like, wow, that's really nice of you guys. What? Why are you doing this? And then we'd go about and asking them and telling them about the reasons why we were doing this. And then we'd proceed to share, um, you know, with them about the gospel. And they'd ask us questions and various different things. So that was one group of, of youth would do that. Then the other group of the of youth would go out and would um, would set up a. Um, uh, like a, like a, a sort of like a little circle where they would be singing praises on the boardwalk. So some of them did, you know, uh, various various uh, hymns and various songs where people, when they would pass by, they'd say, oh, you know, uh, w w what songs are you singing? So we'd give them songs, um, like booklets to sing with us. Um, and it was amazing how many people ended up coming and standing with us and singing with us on the boardwalk um, because... When you hear the name of God being spoken, a lot of people, there is a sense of warmth that at one point in their life they had a relationship with God. And when they see people, especially young people from the age of like 14 all the way to 17, um, singing on the boardwalk, when they could be doing so many other things with their time, that's there's something inspiring about that for them. Um, so, so many people got, came up to us on the boardwalk and sang with us and prayed with us. Um, and uh, it was an amazing experience. Um, so that was like what one of the days would look like. The second day, we sent them out uh, as a group and we gave them interview questions. And what the interview questions look like, I'm sure Mina has spoke about them, was it's sort of uh, a survey. So Baylor University put out a study asking um, people on how they view God. Do they view God as an authoritarian God? who, uh, you know, is a dictator and sort of tells them what to do and wants to control their lives? Do they view God as um, a, uh, a loving God who cares for them intimately and wants to have a relationship with them? Or do they view God as a, um, a distant God who's absent from their life, who has no relationship with them or uh, sort of a standoffish? Um, 
And the statistics that Baylor, the Baylor University study, um, I don't have on hand with me, but um, basically most people viewed God as an authoritarian God. Um, and what we do is ask people how they view God. Um, so a lot of people would say, you know, I view God as distant. A lot of people would say, you know, I don't really believe in God, um, blah, 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 blah. And then what we would do is ask them a series of follow-up questions. Um, and what the questions would be like, was there a period in time where you did believe in God? And then they would, we'd listen to hear out. Um, and if so, um, what, what, God, what God did you believe in, if they're atheist? Um, and what led you to not believe him in him? Um, was there a specific circumstance? Was there, you know, something that led you to to, to have, you know, sort of a, a bitter taste in your mouth when it, in regard to God? Um, and a lot of them would tell them about tell us about the hypocrisy that happened in their local church um, or in their faith system or whatever. Um, and then a lot of them would say, you know, I just sort of fell off and I didn't really care about God anymore. So that was sort of the one track. Then for those who said, you know, we're uh, you know, we don't believe, or we did believe and we stopped believing, um, we would also ask them, are they absolutely sure that, um, you know, that th that their uh, view of God is correct and that they're absolutely certain that um, God doesn't exist? And then we just hear them out. Basically, the, the questions are uh, sort of a guide, but the way conversations carry out, it's impossible for somebody to be able to have a scripted dialogue in order what to say. Um, to to the people, so it was really great to see first of all young people sharing, uh, you know, s zealous about spreading the gospel. Um, number two, the the amazing thing is that people, uh, even if we didn't have, uh, you know, we didn't see fruits immediately, people left thinking about something, um, and we'd often see them the next day at the boardwalk and say, "Hey, how you guys doing?" You know, blah blah blah, and they'd be super nice to talk to us. Um, and the third thing, most importantly, and I think is super crucial, is that when you're giving young people an opportunity to share about the gospel, um, first of all, it challenges them to live it. So um, the young people that were there, even though we didn't do too much, it wasn't like you know this encounter where we s changed people's lives. Every single one of them, they got on the bu bus, they said, this trip changed our lives. Like It changed our lives because, um, number one, it gave us, the, gave us the boldness to be able to speak. Um, to people. Number two, it gave us the um, gave us the ability to see God's work visually um, and to see God, you know, softening people's hearts and experiencing Him. And number three, it gave us um, the challenge to when we get back home to want to live more like God and to be able to sp spread the gospel to our classmates um, and to people that we encounter on a day to day basis. So really revolutionized every single one of these kids' lives because uh, they really felt something real and they had that experience of being a co-worker with God and for God to utilize them um, in a way that um, they could see visibly and they could see tangibly. Um, and, and, and that's actually the beautiful thing because, you know, in uh, and I was sharing this with the group in that in First John... Um, it says, and we know that we pass from um, death to life because we love the brethren. Um, we pass from death to life because we love the brethren. What that verse means is that we share in uh, a, a form of the resurrection, living the resurrection, is when we love others, when we share the gospel with others, when we encounter others in a way that we're bringing the message of the gospel, the, the, the good news to others, there is an element of I am passing from death to life. So I was dead and I'm alive because I'm loving others. And it's the truth. When you are serving others and when you're giving others um, this gift that you have, it really challenges you to be a better person. It challenges you to grow, draw nearer to God. And it challenges you most of all to live what you are saying. Um, I know that I've experienced this you know, so many times in doing mission trips is that when I am uh, in a period of dryness, when I feel like my walk with God isn't um, where I want it to be, when I go out and I serve others, it gives me the motivation and it gives me the, uh, the encouragement to spend more time in prayer, to spend more time reading my Bible, to spend more time you know, bettering myself so that God can utilize me more and more. 
not that I need to be great in order for God to use me, but the more and more I better myself, the more and more I spend time in prayer, the more and more I prepare myself, um, it gives me the tools and gives me um, the ability to present God in a clear and concise manner to others. Um, so that was basically the setup of the trip. Um, and in terms of setting it up for others, um, it's very simple. You know, all you have to do is sort of set a place where you want to go. And it doesn't need to be a weekend getaway. We set a weekend getaway for these kids to take them outside of their normal uh, day-to-day encounters because we wanted them to have, like I said, the, the day, the morning where they would pray. They'd spend some time in quiet time where they would read their Bibles by themselves. Um, and then we'd spend time in reading the Bible. Then we'd go out on the trips. It basically gives them a structured day in order to go out and to... Uh, to to experience God. Um, but the other thing that we did also on the third day that I forgot to mention is that we did um, an event where we did 25 random acts of kindness. And what these 25 random acts of kindness was is that um, this wasn't really a vocal um, uh, where they were going out and speaking to others, but they were just doing random acts of kindness throughout the whole boardwalk. So for example, uh, we had them fill up uh, coin bags um, and tape them onto you know, the the soda machines where it's like 75 cents and inside the bag said, you know, please accept this random act of kindness. Um, and then inside it, we would put uh, a little pamphlet about uh, the church and a pamphlet about orthodoxy and a pamphlet um, about who Jesus is and the message of the salvation. Um, so that was in the thing. Then we they, they would go out and they would put on, like, for example, public bathroom mirrors. You know, in the girls' rooms, they would put, you know, you are truly beautiful. You don't have to worry about your outside, but God sees you and he sees what's inside and he thinks that you're precious and valuable. And then we, uh, another thing that we did was we had them call um, their parents and randomly tell them that they love them um, because they don't tell their parents that they love them enough. Another thing that we had them do was, you know, think of a person that they hadn't uh, talked to in a long period of time, an old friend um, that, uh, you know, maybe has fallen away from the church and we had them call them and talk to them. Another thing that we had them do, um, and we had like the, the whole list and that could be provided to you guys as a resource. Um, and if anyone needs any further information, I can, you know, I'm happy to uh, show you guys how we went about in, in setting it up. Um, and the other, so so that those are the weekend trips. The other things that we we often do is we set out um, and we do day trips. So we'll go to like you know New York City, for example, and uh, we'll do surveys. Um, we'll hand out water bottles. We'll give out chocolates. Um, we'll do random different things like that where we have an opportunity to share the gospel. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a weekend trip where people um, are spending three days away from their homes. Um, it could be something that's done in a day trip, a spiritual day. Um, but the one thing that I, I really um, think is super important is to spend time in the morning in prayer. Um, and number two, giving each person a chance to spend in quiet by themselves. So group prayer, think quiet times, preparing themselves internally um, and spending time reading God's Word to have sort of an inspiration. And the third thing that we had them do was, uh, before your trip, write down um, your personal story with God, how God has changed your life. Because if your life hasn't been changed, then how can you, um, how can you tell others that God's life, God's Word can change your life and God, God is able to do uh, you know, a work in their lives? And then the last thing that we did was uh, we got to get back together before the trip, before going out and doing the mission and praying again and then setting out to do the mission. Um, so those are the logistics of how to set up a local mission trip. Um, if you'd like any further information, feel free to contact me. Um, my email address is C as in Chris, uh, E-S-T-A-F as in Frank, A-N at gmail.com. I'd be happy to provide you guys with the interview questions. I'd be happy to provide you with, uh, you know, how we set about the, the, the sort of the training sessions, how we, um, what, what was provided during the training sessions. Um, and then if, if need be, uh, we often as a group travel out and set up, uh, weekend mission trips with various groups all over the country. Um, so I pray that this, um, this session was, uh, inspiring to you. 
Um, and I pray that it, it, it's just sort of a little bit of a, a appetizer to tell you what um, a mission trip, a local mission trip will look like. Um, I, I truly believe that these mission trips are more uh, of a, uh, a, re a reviver for us um, as servants and more of a, uh, you know, you know when a person is having, uh, you know, a cardiac issue, they have to use a cardiac resuscitator. Um, well, service and mission is the cardiac resuscitator where it gives, um, you know, if a person feels like they're dying and, and they're feeling like they're dead in, uh, spiritually, it gives you that resuscitation and gives you that motivation to, um, to be encouraged to pray and gives uh, you the zeal to be able to live like Jesus would live. I pray that God would bless each and every one of you um, and that we would uh, truly live uh, out the Great Commission where we would go out to all nations and preach to them the gospel and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Um, I believe that uh, there's so much need for mission and evangelism, and I pray that we would be the hands and feet of Christ on earth. And glory be to God forever and ever, amen.